Vision can be monocular, biocular and binocular. 1. Monocular vision. It is a vision of single eye. Here you can see monocular visual field. 2nd. Biocular vision. It is a vision of two eyes without coordination. This is the biocular visual field. 3rd. Binocular vision. It is a coordinated vision of two eyes or overlap of monocular visual fields. Here you can see binocular visual field. Let's see what is visual field. Visual field is a three-dimensional area of subjects surroundings that can be seen at any one time around an object of fixation when eyes are in a stationary position and looking straight ahead. This is the visual field. Types of visual field 1. Central visual field. It includes an area from fixation point to a circle 30 degrees away. It contains the physiological blind spot on the temporal side. Here you can see the central visual field along with the blind spot. 2. Peripheral visual field. Rest of the area beyond 30 degrees to outer extent of the field of vision is called peripheral field. Here around the central field you can see the extent of the peripheral field. The extent of the normal visual field is superiorly 50 degrees, inferiorly 70 degrees, temporally 90 degrees and nasally 60 degrees. The extent of normal visual field. The extent of total field of vision is 180 degrees. This is the total field of vision. The extent of monocular field of vision of each eye is 150 to 170 degrees. This is the monocular field. When the two eyes are used together, their visual fields overlap by 120 degrees. The overlapping part of the visual fields seen by both eyes together is called binocular visual field. Here you can see the binocular visual field. Extending on the sides of the binocular fields are crescent-shaped monocular portions of visual fields of approximately 30 degrees seen by each eye alone called temporal crescents. Here at the side you can see the temporal crescents. Let us experiment through a demonstration. We can know about our monocular visual fields and the temporal crescents. With both eyes open fix it precisely on a distant object. Now hold a pencil or a finger besides your head vertically next to your left ear. Without moving your gaze from the distant object, bring the pencil around the front of your head until you first see it in your peripheral field. Now close your left eye without moving your hand or the pencil from its place. Can you see the pencil? Why not? That is because the pencil is now located in the portion of the visual field that is monocular, seen only by the left eye and lies in the left eye's temporal crescent. Let's compare the visual fields of humans to different species. First, frog. Frogs can see almost 360 degrees around them and this type of vision is called panoramic vision. There is little or no overlap between the visual fields of the two eyes in frogs. Frogs don't have as much depth perception or stereoscopic vision as other animals do. Second, birds. Pigeons have a wide visual field of nearly 360 degrees with a very narrow binocular field. Owls have binocular vision with 120 degrees of field of vision. The American woodcock has the largest visual field of 360 degrees in the horizontal plane and 180 degrees in the vertical plane. Third, animals such as cats, dogs and horses. A. Uniocular field. Dogs and cats can see about 150 degrees around from the nose. The horse can see about 350 degrees around because their eyes are positioned to the side of the head. This makes horses better able to watch for potential predators. B. Binocular field. Dogs and cats have a field of 85 degrees while horses have a field of 65 degrees compared to humans who have a binocular field of 120 degrees. Dogs and cats have some binocular vision but not as much as humans.
This is a picture comparing the monocular and the binocular visual fields of animals and birds having side facing eyes and front facing eyes. Have you ever wondered what are the benefits of having two eyes instead of one? The two eyes give us a larger field of view allowing us to see more of the world around us at a time. We can navigate through our world more quickly when using two eyes. When the two eyes look at the same object, the right eye sees the left side better and the left eye sees the right side better due to anatomical position of the eyes. This subtle difference between the images in each eye that produces an ability to judge different distances of the objects from their surroundings is called stereo vision or stereopsis. Here you can see that the left eye sees the right side better and the right eye sees the left side better of the two objects in front of the eyes. With stereo vision, you see an object as solid in three spatial dimensions. So, it is possible to perceive the height, width and depth of these objects. Let's experiment through a demonstration. Two eyes see the same object from slightly different angles. Look at the tip of the finger located at about 40 cm in front of the eyes and notice what you see behind. This is both eyes view. The finger and the tree are in the same plane. Close right eye and see with the left eye. Then quickly close the left eye and see with the right eye without moving the finger or the hand. The finger as well as the objects behind the finger should appear to move slightly from one side to another depending upon the eyes open. This is the left eye view where the finger and the tree aren't in the same plane. Even in the right eye view the finger and the tree aren't in the same plane. This tells you that the images formed by both eyes while looking at the same object are slightly different. So, why do we not have more than two eyes? Theoretically, three eyes would have given us better stereopsis than two eyes as demonstrated by computer scientists. However, biological systems are not very precise. Misalignment of two eyes, squint, can lead to double vision, diplopia, and so more eyes would mean low chances of all eyes being perfectly aligned with each other. The addition of a third eye would not be without its problems. The strain of keeping them aligned would cause trinocular accommodative and convergence problems that would hamper daily activities like reading or sports. Esthonopia, headaches resulting from these disorders can lead to difficulty performing many visual tasks that may be required in schooling occupation or hobby. Having two eyes already provided us with enough depth perception needed for performing all activities smoothly and comfortably. The advantages of having two eyes is better than the cost that needs to be paid for having three eyes. Development of Binocular Vision During the first few years of life, certain normal anatomical and physiological conditions are required for the development of binocular vision. The factors concerned in the development of binocular vision and which enable the eyes to function in a coordinated manner are a. Anatomical factors The two eyes are so situated in the orbit that the visual axis is directed in the same direction. This is due to the shape of the orbit, presence of adjacent ligaments, muscles and connective tissues. The extraocular muscles have an important role to play as they provide motor correspondence because of the innovations of the extraocular muscles. B. Physiological factors The development of binocular vision depends upon certain normal physiological binocular reflexes. The reflexes can either be inborn or acquired as a result of appropriate stimulation. The various binocular reflexes are 1. Postural reflexes 2. Fixation reflexes 3. Refixation reflexes Postural reflexes 
postural reflexes are inborn and must be present if binocular vision is to develop. A. Static reflexes. They compensate for changes in position of the head relative to the body. B. Statokinetic reflexes. They compensate for changes in head position relative to space. Fixation reflexes. Fixation reflexes form the mechanism from which the binocular vision develops. A. The fixation reflex. The fixation reflex achieves foveal fixation in each eye. B. The refixation reflex allows foveal refixation from target to target and maintenance of foveal fixation on a moving target. Refixation reflexes. Most neonates are capable of locating and briefly fixing a moving target and their eyes can move in a coarsely conjugate fashion. A. The first reflex. It is the conjugate fixation reflex where eyes learn to move binocularly together during versions. B. Disjugate refixation reflex. It allows the binocular vision to be maintained through the range of virgins movements that follow changes of fixation distance. C. The corrective fusion reflex. It allows binocular vision to be maintained under the conditions of stress such as overcoming prisms in clinical testing situations. D. Kinetic reflexes. It maintains binocular vision through controlled accommodation and convergence. Let us learn about binocular vision development in infants. At 2-3 to three weeks, the infant turns his head to fixate an object. At 4-5 to five weeks, the infant can sustain monocular fixation of large near objects. At 5-6 to six weeks, the conjugate fixation reflex has developed and the two eyes will conjugately fix an object and follow it over a considerable range for at least a few seconds. At first, 1 to 3 months, the infant can superimpose images. At 3 months, the infant develops binocular vision. At 4 months, saccades develop. From 3 to 6 months, the infants develop the ability to perceive stereopsis. At 6 months of age, the infants develop the ability to perceive depth up to 60 arc seconds. Conjugate movements of binocular vision become accurate and convergence is well developed. From 6 to 8 months, fusional movement can be detected by placing a small prism over either eye. During infancy, the development of ability to fuse images at the horopter and within the parent's fusional area as well as development of virgin's function of the eye is influenced by dramatic changes in eyeball size and orbit position. Stay tuned with us for more at Smart Optometry.